at it, you're basically building big advocates of your game that supposedly are kind of these hubs for more people to get in. And that's demonstrating that as something more than just marketing theory is what is really challenging, I think, about esports as part of a business development plan. And that's something that, you know, high res has been, you know, I guess they've accommodated me in, in kind of incorporating that into our business design around, you know, showing you know, features and, and adding features to the game that will allow that to grow. I mean, you look at a lot of other games that have really become super successful now, and one of the things actually on StarCraft that I'm gonna talk about was demoing. I mean, that's huge for StarCraft, is that, like, the ability to have access to that stuff all the time, and with tribes, that's something that's very big for us, and that's something that we develop into is the idea of, we have a very robust spectator mode, for instance, that was identified pretty early on in development as, like, we wanna go this route, we need this, and, and so, I think that that really is a testament to the power of the consumer. Now, in, with video games especially, it's, I mean, it's a very unique entertainment medium in which you get almost instantaneous feedback with the people that are creating content versus something like movies or books or any other kind of entertainment, really. You get that one-on-one -on -one interaction with, with developers. You know, for instance, I stream... When and actually, I would love to like do a reverse, you know, role reversal here and ask these guys a question because I wonder if there's ever any pushback from the developers to say, well, if people are streaming, why do we need a spectator mode anyway? Um, but in actuality, of course, to conduct a tournament, you know, you would need that spectator mode. So, Barton, you know, what do you guys think? Do you ever get pushback because someone says, well, gosh, if they're going to stream on Twitch, you know, why do we even need a spectator mode? Uh, yeah, we got pushed back until we capped a thousand on a stream, and I sent out an email to you know my my VP and my senior management, and they were like, okay, yeah, this is for real. I mean, I got them to put in, you know, I I basically you know started just bribing programmers to give me features, right? I mean, it was no <laughs> UI support. I mean, the guys are around from the beginning of Tribes, and it'll be the same way with Smite, I imagine. I mean, they really see the value now. They're probably gonna start pumping it out with our next title, but with Tribes, I mean, it was literally like you had like basically an invisible shrike, an invisible plane to fly around in. It was like really, I mean, it was really that stripped down. And you had like, you know, the console printing to the screen. And then, you know, we, we put together a match and all of a sudden, you know, they're looking at it and they're like, wow, we have more people watching the game than playing. You know, and then all of a sudden it's like, okay, you know, next week I'm in a meeting around, I need a list of requirements, we need, you know, so there, yes, to answer your question, yes, there is pushback initially because it goes back to what we were talking about earlier around, it's very hard to demonstrate return on investment. And especially in a studio like mine where we're very, very agile and very small and we don't have a publisher and we set all our own deadlines and we patch every week, doing something that's an arc that takes more than one week is very challenging for a studio like mine because, you know, it, it's all about moving forward and progression as part of what our value proposition, I guess, is for the game uh, around that kind of a very, very fast uh, development cycle.